As a New Yorker, I am no stranger to noise. And noise can be energizing if you're out at the club or at a concert, but it's not so great when you're out at a loud restaurant trying to have a conversation with your mom. Or if you're in the office getting ready for a huge presentation, but you can't focus because you're hearing every single word of your coworkers' conversation about their weird health issues. Acoustics is so important to designing a functional space, but it can also be a very intimidating part of the design process. So today I'm partnering with Snow Sound to teach you the basics of acoustics. Let's get started. What's up designers? My name is Kelsey Omis. I'm an NCIDQ certified interior designer and the owner of KLSY, a Manhattan-based interior design studio specializing in commercial spaces. My mission is to help you as a designer excel in your career while promoting transparency about the industry and profession. Today, I'm bringing you to the showroom of Snow Sound, an acoustic solutions manufacturer leading the innovation in interior acoustic products. And because I myself am not an acoustics expert, I've teamed up with one to help us out. Hi, I'm Mike Dardashti, President of Sales for Snow Sound USA. But before we get into any technical details regarding acoustics, we first need to talk about why acoustics are important in a space. It's important for you as a designer to understand the basics of acoustics and the role it plays in interior design for the same reason that you need to understand ergonomics or lighting or ADA accessibility. It doesn't matter how beautiful the space is that you designed, if it can't function properly for the user's needs, it's bad design. A space can look very beautiful, but it's only as good as the way the users can actually use it. So acoustics is part of our senses. We want sound to exist, but when the sound is not controlled, it turns into noise, and that's what prevents productivity, thinking, and it even can affect our well-being. When talking about acoustics, you might be inclined to think that the goal is soundproofing, which means that no sound can escape from a room. But just like Mike mentioned, we're not trying to get rid of sound altogether. What we're trying to do is reduce the uncomfortable noise that comes from noise reverberation, which is referred to as sound dampening. Sound dampening products absorb sound waves and reduce the reverberation or reflection of those waves in the room. But Kelsey, how can I know if a product or material is sound dampening or not? I'm glad you asked. There are two rating systems that help designers determine how well a product will perform acoustically. STC, which stands for Sound Transmission Class, and NRC, which stands for Noise Reduction Coefficient. STC and NRC are equally important in the project. The best way to remember it is STC is transmission between spaces, and NRC is about how well the acoustics are managed inside of a room. Think about it this way. Imagine that you're sitting at your desk in an open office area, and your boss's office is just a few feet away. Unfortunately for you, your boss has a weird obsession with the Bee Gees, and you can hear him playing their hit single, Staying Alive, on repeat for eight hours straight a day. What you would need are materials with a high STC rating to reduce the transmission of disco from his office to your desk. Now, imagine you're sitting in a large conference room. In order to ensure that the room doesn't echo and you can hear everyone speaking clearly, you'll want to include high NRC rated materials. To know if a product is STC or NRC rated, you can check the product specifications, which you can find either on the product's website page or on the back of your sample. For snow sound products, you can scan the QR code with your phone and get the specifications there. So typically STC, sound transmission class, is a rating between 25 and 65. 40 is usually the minimum benchmark for offices, whereas 60 is soundproofing in a partition. NRC is a scale between zero and one, one being the most absorptive material. So you should try and focus on only using products that have a 0.7 rating or higher. So the higher the STC of a product and the higher the NRC of a product, the better these products will perform. I'm gonna use some Snow Sound products as an example. So here we have a Snow Sound acoustic panel. This has an NRC rating of 1.0, which means that we don't need a lot of acoustic panel material for a room in order to achieve the acoustic rating that we're looking for. Of course, you're gonna to wanna to talk to your Snow Sound rep or anyone that's working as the acoustic engineer on your project. But if we take a look at Snow Sound's Snow Wall product, which I have the specification on the back here. I can see that the NRC rating for this product is 
0.25, which means that we're gonna need more of this product than the acoustic panel product to achieve the same acoustic rating. You might also wanna pair this with something like a drapery or have a combination of acoustic panel and acoustic wall covering. Now that we know the basics of acoustics, let's talk about some architectural acoustic strategies you can use when designing. The reason we're even having this course is because of hard surfaces being used in so many interior design settings. You have hard walls, hard floors, hard ceilings, and so sound is bouncing around all of these materials without anything to absorb it. We don't want designers to feel like they can't design the way that they want. We just want to give them the tools to know how you can have the space look the way you want, but also perform the way that it's supposed to. And with so many hard reflective surfaces, you need to include acoustic products in that space in order for that space to work with you, not against you. And when designing this type of architecture, one popular way to reduce sound is by using ceiling baffles or clouds. These are especially helpful when you have big open spaces with open ceilings, like an open office, large assembly spaces, or warehouse type spaces. You can also find acoustic baffle products with lighting integration like this to seamlessly blend in with your lighting design. Our next architectural strategy is to use acoustic wall covering, which we looked at before. It's a product that Snow Sound has been developing and producing for years. Because if you're already planning to add wall covering to a room, why not make it acoustic? Our final acoustic strategy is probably the simplest of all, carpet. Instead of opting for hard floor products like wood or concrete, carpet can drastically reduce the echo in a room because it has fibers that help absorb sound. So is it necessary to use all three of these strategies in your design? Mike actually gave me a great tip to make it super easy to understand. So best practices if you're designing a conference room is you want to have soft materials on at least two of the surfaces in the space. And adjacent surfaces will work better for acoustics than opposites. So keep that in mind. So choose two preferably adjacent surfaces to add acoustic materials to, like the ceiling and one wall, or one wall and the floor. And you can be confident that the acoustics in your conference room will be superb, even if the guy on the Zoom call can't figure out how to unmute himself. <laughs> but Kelsey, what if the architecture of the space is already built and there's no way for me to add any of those elements? Who keeps letting that guy in here? If you've already designed a space with lots of hard surfaces, or you've been hired to only decorate and furnish a space, there are plenty of applied acoustic elements that you can use. The first you probably see all the time, and that is wall panels. Wall panels come in an infinite amount of colors, sizes, and designs, and they can be hung on the wall using a Z-clip or simply direct glued to any surface. This also includes the ceiling, and they can be a great alternative to acoustic baffles. For something movable, try an acoustic divider, like this. Dividers are a great way to control sound in any part of the room and divide space at the same time. Upholster furniture is another easy way to help mitigate noise, because fabric is a soft surface to absorb sound. And if you're selecting a COM or a custom fabric, why not choose a snow sound fabric to increase the absorption level even more? And don't forget about drapery. Acoustic drapery is actually making a huge impact in spaces because it's not a single dimensional solution. Drapery is aesthetic, it provides privacy, and with acoustic fabric, it provides the sound dampening that you're looking for. Thanks, Mike. A good example of the impact that drapery has on a space is right here in Snow Sound's acoustic testing room. We are essentially in a glass box with no acoustic materials, and I'm sure my voice sounds even more uncomfortable for your ears than normal. But when we pull back this curtain, the echo is immediately gone and the audio is crystal clear. This particular fabric is Snow Sound's Snow Curtain Drapery, which will be more absorptive than a standard fabric. I think the most common mistakes designers are making is either not specifying acoustics at all because they don't know where to start, or specifying some amount of acoustic material without knowing the right amount to use. When in doubt, you can always reach out to your local Snow Sound rep to refine the acoustics in your design. You can find Snow Sound at snowsoundusa.com and you can explore all the different solutions that we have. Follow us on Instagram at snowsoundusa. Visit us at our experience showrooms in LA and New York to hear the difference for yourself. Thank you so much to Snow Sound for collaborating with me on this video. And 
As always, if you're looking for more educational interior design content, then be sure to hit that subscribe button. And don't forget to sign up for my email list down in the description box to join the KLSY community. I'll see you next time.